record. And so just so you know, we are recording. All right, Jersey Shore, it's 95.9 The Rat Morning Guy, uh, Carl Kraft, with Rob Dietrich, the master distiller for Black and American Whiskey. Rob, thank you for joining us. Congratulations for the, the official unboxing of this on the Jersey Shore, man. Oh, it's, it's a pleasure to be here, Carl. Thank you. I know this is so exciting. What a project. When, when I first heard, all right, Metallica's going to do a whiskey, is this going to be a serious thing? Is this just some stuff being put in a bottle? It's that's, serious. I mean, when, you know, that's always uh, that's usually the first question I think when people say, "Okay, there's there's a celebrity brand out there," uh, but just like everything, you know, that Metallica does, they put a thousand percent at it. They want, you know, just as they've honed their craft for you know for almost forty years uh, making music, they wanted somebody who could make whiskey and make the best whiskey out there. Um, so you know, originally that was uh, that was Dave Pickerel. He was the the original master distiller, um, legendary craft distiller. I mean, the guy's had his fingers in, in you know countless uh, whiskeys and projects. Yeah, um, I mean, with Maker's Mark, and then I mean, well, right? Whiskey Pig. I know. Yeah, and, and, I mean, if you had a craft distillery, you he was your man to contact. To, without a doubt, without yeah. a doubt. So, so that's exactly yeah. If, if some of our rat listeners who may be whiskey fans, drinking fans, and I know who you are don't know Dave's name, please look him up. It's well worth the read. And I just want to say it's well worth the read with your interview, Rob, on uh, Metallica.com, the So What interview. We could, we could probably be here for a couple hours talking about it, but <laughs> let's, talk, let's talk whiskey. You came into the project. Sadly, my condolences on losing your friend, Dave, but you came in. Tell me, as we unbox this, I may actually take a set. Good man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, listen, it's almost five somewhere. Right. Where was your head when you came into the project? Um, you know, I was, I was ecstatic. I mean, for one, I'm a, I'm a huge Metallica fan. Um, I absolutely love my craft. I, you know, I, I, I get to make whiskey, drink whiskey and talk about whiskey, you know? So I, I, you know, so I've already, I already thought I had my dream job, you know, I've, yeah. I was, uh, I've been making whiskey in Colorado for for the last uh, you know 13 years, and and so now it's uh, now I get to make whiskey, drink whiskey, talk whiskey, and I get to do it with Metallica. So like you know I've got my dream job within my dream job. What was um, the job interview? You're going to get a job. You're doing an interview with Metallica. Whoa! Come on, what's that like? <laughs> it was, you know the first uh, couple of interviews were with the CEO and, uh, and the sales director and the CEO again, and they were trying to narrow it down to, um, you know, they had several distillers they were talking to about this. And I, um, and I honestly, I felt like I was like, you know, on American Idol or something. You know, just trying to like <laughs> narrow it down. Um, and it was exciting. You know, it's just, um, I was pleased to be a part of the process. You know, whether I got the job or not, I was just excited to even be a part of it. And, uh, and, the, and the final interview was with the band at HQ in, in California. And so it was, you know, it was a little surreal because I hadn't had a, a job interview in like 15 years, right. uh, let alone, you know, <laughs> getting interviewed by, uh, by you know, each member individually of the band, you know, Metallica. So it was, it was pretty uh, extraordinary. I can imagine. The, uh, let's, let's get started with the unboxing as we talk a little bit about the yeah. project. I understand that you're, you're more than just what's in the bottle on this project. Is that right? That's, that's true. You know, so just to give a little background on the whiskey itself, you know, we are, we're taking uh, bourbons and, and rice. Uh, we're taking whiskey from Tennessee and Kentucky. We're blending all together, average of eight years. And we're playing music to it um, while it's cask finishing in black brandy barrels. And that's what we call the black noise uh, sonic enhancement process. So the band, each individually takes turns creating the playlist that we play to each individual batch. So for example, batch 97 would have been Robert Trujillo. Uh, so this batch, um, I was very, um, very honored to have been asked by the band to select the 12 songs that we played uh, and did the, the sonic enhancement to, um, to batch 100. So the songs on this picture disc yes. that you chose were played yep. for the whiskey. Correct. And somehow you and Dave have this idea that it helped the whiskey move in and out of the charred barrels, or in this case, the uh, the the um, the cast finished barrels. The cast cast finished. 
Tell me about how that works. How does the sound do that? You know, that's a, that was one of my first questions because I, you know, I'm, first and foremost, I'm a whiskey nerd. You know, I make whiskey, and I, so wow. this was a, this was a whole process that that I I could understand the logic behind it, but I wanted to see the science behind it, and that was uh, that was what was exciting is that Dave had taken a barrel um, that he had, he had put the, the the whiskey into the cask finishing and did not apply the, the black noise sonic enhancement process to. Then he had a barrel that he applied the, the sonic enhancement process to right. and sent these samples off to a lab. And when he got them back, it was noticeably different. All the, uh, the levels in the sonic enhanced barrel were completely elevated in it. It was, it was incredible. incredible. That's really incredible. Yeah, so we're actually, we're actually making whiskey with music or at least a process. Part of it is, is, you know, is part of it. And what I and I'm gonna give this a try. Yeah, good man. Okay. Yeah. So first, first sip is gonna acclimate the mouth. Um, you know, you're gonna get a little bit of uh, you know get that warmth in there. And that second sip, you're gonna get a lot more of the flavor profile from it. Okay. I see. Yeah. Where, I see where uh, see where you're suggesting. Yeah, third sip, uh, you know, you'll get a little bit more flavor for profile. Fourth sip, you're gonna be dancing on the table, uh, you know. And so, so, ladies, come on in. <laughs> it's not. This is the real deal. This is smooth. It's not overpowered by the casks that you put it in the the uh, share the brandy casks. Wow. Yeah. Well, and that's the you know, and that's the fun part about it. Is that you know we wanted to create a whiskey that can you know, stand independently on its own, and it's and it's proven that um, you know we we, we submitted it to the uh, San Francisco World uh, Spirits Competition this year and won a gold medal, you right. know and that's a that's a blind tasting so they're they're trying the whiskey they don't know the story behind it they don't know anything behind it they're trying it for the first time blind so um, it's it, it's a whiskey that stands on its own world class. It's really smooth and it's got a real depth of flavor that kind of keeps coming up through my nostrils and into my sinuses. Yeah. Tell me a little, yes. bit, tell me a little about, the, about the picture discs because uh, I see some familiar faces from these four gentlemen, but I also see you, um, I mean, you got your face on a Metallica picture disc. I, I couldn't be more ecstatic, man. It's, it's pretty incredible. Um, and again, such an honor, you know, they, uh, uh, you know, what, uh, you know, when they first asked me, they said, okay, we want you to pick 12 songs yeah. and, and then we're going to send them off to Lars and Lars is going to call them down to six songs. So we're going to do, um, a, a one record release with, um, three songs on each side. And, uh, Lars came back uh, and he said, I love every single song Rob picked. We're doing a two record, uh, <laughs> release instead. And, um, and, uh, with the, with batch 100. So it was pretty, pretty incredible. The the songs I picked, I really wanted to get some older stuff in there. I wanted to represent, you know, a lot of the the, the eras of Metallica as well as um, I wanted to, to. I had this idea that you know if the music, if the Metallica music, you know, on on top of the process that we're already doing for making the whiskey, if the Metallica music is having an effect on the whiskey, so would the voices of the fans. Yeah. And so I, I, I made sure that I picked some really, really large, heavy hitting live tracks um, so that the, the voices of the fans are also a part of the collaboration of making this whiskey. The, uh, the booklet that is included in with this describes some of what you're talking about with um, why you chose and I, uh, each song. I happen, yeah. I happen to notice what you picked for Dave, and then it hit me that, oh man, that's Dave. Yes. You, you chose Nothing Else Matters to send to him and his memory. Why is that? Um, you know, it was, it was one of his favorite Metallica songs, and it was also uh, a live recording. They recorded it last year, uh, 2019, and, uh, and James Hetfield actually dedicates verbally he says this song's for Dave. Yeah. So it's actually on the record. Yeah. This sounds to me like there's a long-term experience. We're up to 100 batches so far. How, how many batches? Uh, where are we going with this? Well, you know, it's, uh, 
it's it's pretty incredible. There's there, uh, and you know, and also to clarify, um, the band started the the whiskey batches at batch eighty one because that's the oh. year that they started. My bad. Uh, so batch one hundred is just a, a fun milestone um, in, in a in a just the the beginning of really. Uh, the innovations that we can come up with using sound, using music, using, you know, things that I'm, you know, I'm used to traditional methods of making whiskey, you know, stills, blending, fermentation, barrel aging, cast finishing, but now we're using sonic enhancement. Now we're using music. And that, and what I love is that the band is, uh, um, it's kind of the sky's the limit. Like they recognize like, look, we're artists. We make our music the way we want to. You're a whiskey artist. You make whiskey the way you want to. And, and they're giving me free reign for that. And I, I couldn't be more grateful. You get a cool sticker. You get uh, this cool blackened pin, and yeah. a, uh, a pick, a little spot for the bottle in there. This is quite the packaging, man. This this I, is quite the packaging. It's available at uh, blackendwhiskey.com or check the link out on the page where we have this posted. It's a way cool project that uh, you can tell. Whiskey fans are really gonna like. Metallica fans are really gonna like, and it's created by a guy who is both. We're connecting, connect, connecting all the worlds. And I, I gotta tell you, we have such a great team at uh, you know Sweet Amber Distilling, our our Black and Whiskey team. Uh, there were so many minds, you know, putting this thing together. You know, the packaging, the the zine. I mean, the zine is a flashback to the old school. You know, when you get a before we had the internet, before we had cell phones. You know, you get your fanzine, and that just brings you up to date on everything that is cool behind the scenes happening. So, um, you know, this is issue number one for the scene uh, and it's, we're just going to keep on going. This is, uh, this is only the beginning. It's really interesting. And at, in these times, we kind of need m more connection than ever to our favorite artists. And here's a cool way, here's a cool way for Metallica and whiskey fans to kind of join together and, and make these, make these uh, connections even more real now, you know? Absolutely. You know, it, it's it's pretty, uh, yeah. Especially in these times, you know, this is uh, you know, we're we're finding that the Zoom reality is is the new reality, and we're we're connecting on that level. But this is something visceral that you can hold in your hands. You can put that record on yeah. uh, the record player. That was that was the first thing I did when I opened up the box, because I've got a huge vinyl collection. I'm a I'm a I'm you know, I I've, I've been collecting for years, and I. First thing I did I was like, okay, we're putting this thing on, and we were cranking. We're going to eleven. <laughs> right, 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 right. How'd it sound? I don't have a turntable here, otherwise I'd do it. Yeah, no, it's incredible. Uh, you know, the, um, the the very first song is uh, Blackened Live, uh, Seattle, uh, 1989. And um, and it was, I mean, of course I had to have Blackened in there, uh, but I wanted an epic version of Blackened. So uh, that one was uh, um, really just heavy hit and the energy of the, the audience was just incredible. So that was that was one of the reasons I picked that one. Very cool. Very cool yeah. project and a really tasty beverage. Obviously, it's not something that they just said, oh, I'll put something in a bottle and you know we'll slap our name on it. As a matter of fact, you don't see the name Metallica on the whole thing. You don't see their, you don't see their signatures, you don't see their name. Um, what a very cool point is that the, the black sound wave behind uh, the word blackened, that's actually uh, James, uh, a sound wave of James Hetfield singing the word blackened. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, so that's it's just awesome. these little subtle, little subtle nods in there, little subtle hints without, um, without getting, uh, you know, over metallicized. Yeah, they really wanted to do it right. Um, Absolutely, you know, if, you, if you're a whiskey aficionado, but don't know anything about Metallica, you're just, you're not going to know uh, what the word blackened is, you're just going to assume that it, it, it stands for uh, the sonic enhancement or the, or the char of the barrel. And if you're a Metallica fan, you're going to know immediately what blackened is. Yeah, of course. Name, and then you're going to want to try the whiskey because, um, you know, if you're a, if you're a fan of both, it's uh, it's it's pretty it's extraordinary how it stands alone. So the whiskey listened somehow to the music, got affected in the process. It's really amazing thought process. That's it, so cool. It's a, it's a pretty cool. It was a cool concept, an incredible idea. Uh, you know that that Dave had had sitting around for a long time. He had. Um, He'd been a cadet at West Point and had uh, been befriended the the guy who was the caretaker of the uh, the giant pipe organ there. It's apparently the largest pipe organ pipe organ in uh, North America, 
And the guy showed him this note that if you, if you held it for too long, the building would start to vibrate so aggressively that he was afraid he was going to take the building off, off the foundation. So he, he, it was something that always stuck with him. He's like, well, if we can use sound to, to vibrate, maybe it can move in and out of the barrel at a, at a rapid pace. Huh. And, uh, and it has proven that it does work. That must have been an amazing taste process when you said, okay, here's the one that has and here's the one that's different. The, yeah. Noticing absolutely. that difference must have been amazing. Well, and it's, uh, you know, I think I, I wasn't there when Dave uh, first did that test, but he apparently his, he just completely lit up. I mean, he was like, this is amazing. It works. It works. <laughs> it's like that Eureka moment, you know, it's cool. And now you're putting Metallica through it. It's very cool. Absolutely. Oh, is the only place we can find this uh, at blackandwhiskey.com or can I, you know, I've got, I've got a couple of really great go-to uh, shout out bourbon, scotch and beer, Lakewood, New Jersey. I got a couple of great spots that uh, I'd love to see this on the shelves. Um, yeah, so right now, uh, for the time being, uh, we, we released this on e-commerce. So, uh, so if you go to blackened, uh, blackandwhiskey.com, um, you'll be able to see the places that you can buy it online. Um, you know, and it, the only place I think we can't ship to is New York, unfortunately, because of liquor laws. Right. Um, and of course, uh, Europe. We, we've had so many requests from, from fans all over the world who – we're like we want to get this here and it's like it's you know it's it's a little more complicated when it comes to international liquor laws i'm sure yeah yeah very cool all right so we're all going to blackandwhiskey.com right now to get uh, shipping to jersey and the jersey shore rob thanks for your time man this has been uh, a really great uh, moment uh, taste test and very cool to talk to you uh, as a whiskey fan myself to someone who's just so steeped in it. It's been a bit of real pleasure, man. Thanks for your time. It's, it's a pleasure as well, Carl. Thank you so much for the hospitality. When the uh, movie comes out on your life, let me know because there's a <laughs> lot there. <laughs> awesome, man. Thank you. I appreciate I'll it. I'll see you later, man. All right. Cheers. Thank you.